So in summary with the VATS, weak or hypotonic muscles, similar to cerebral palsy symptoms in humans, are diagnosed as nutritional deficiency symptoms in small animals and quickly solved with high quality food. It is accepted fact that deficiencies in trace minerals will result in an increase in sick and or dead calves in the dairy industry, and foals born to mares fed chelated minerals had increased immunity at birth, while yearlings had increased hoof growth. Vets all in all fields understand the best approach in most cases is to feed a diet known to contain the proper amount and balance of minerals for normal growth. How were the doctors missing it? Well, they weren't exactly. The doctors were seeing the major minerals listed on the back of the formula bottles or even the insured Similac, and they were forgetting that more are needed, the trace minerals. Without them, well, you've seen the pictures and you've met the children. In comparison, the stuff I used read like the periodic table, and that's why it worked. I have been blessed with a stubborn and contrary nature. And the more people told me no one will listen, enjoy your life, the more determined I became to get this information out there to the people who needed it. Every time I remembered the other parents in the NICU, I felt compelled to pick up the phone one more time and try to get someone whose job is getting kids healthy to investigate this stuff. But it didn't work. Everyone I contacted was very busy doing very important work. Finally, I shanghaied some friends and we started the Premi Growth Project. The idea was show that it worked for other people and then someone would either do a formal study or enough people would find out about it that it wouldn't matter. And it worked. Boom. The babies in the project did the same thing mine did. Two to four months and they were caught up and acting like full-term babies. My kids weren't mutants. They were normal, just like everyone else. After every success, part of me was going, okay, now somebody's going to pay attention, right? But they didn't. Did I mention the whole, if your kid is fine, just keep doing what you're doing because you're a lucky thing? And recruiting was hard. Parents were leery of listening to someone who wasn't a doctor preach about the nutritional deficits of their newborns. And frankly, every time I watched Judge Judy, I would have nightmares of somebody suing us. Insurance in case was going to cost tens of thousands of dollars, and we aren't rich. The project was fizzling out, and I was starting to think it was just time to move on with my life. I had healthy kids, a loving husband, and a career I actually enjoyed. Who was I to tell these people that it wasn't just vitamins their kids needed, but vitamins and minerals? This is cereal box science, right? Enter Jordan. On June 20th, 2011, Jordan was told her son, who was nine months old, weighed 12 pounds, and not meeting any of his milestones, even with his adjusted age of six months, had cerebral palsy, and she needed to plan on him spending the rest of his life in a wheelchair. On Tuesday, June 21st, she was talking with me, and the next day she started giving him the micronutrients I'd given my children. Ten weeks later, her son weighed 22 pounds and took his first steps before his first birthday. It was time to get back to work. I picked up the phone again. I called everyone and their brothers. But the reality was he could have been misdiagnosed. Everyone was happy for her, but nobody was interested in investigating. After all, she was lucky. In October of 2011, Michigan put on an infant mortality summit. You may have heard that the United States has one of the worst rates of infant mortality, that means dead babies, at, I believe, 3%. It turns out the state of Michigan is running about 8%. That is eight dead babies per thousand. They just call it 8% when they explain it. While Detroit and Flint are currently in the upper teens, since prematurity is the number one cause of infant mortality, I thought this would be a great venue to share my information. It was educational. Slide after slide went up and it all made sense. Everything that they were saying was the exact same thing as the vet literature. And without even trying to, Dr. Valerie Police Parisi from Wayne State School of Medicine made the case over and over again. 70% of infant mortality is attributable to premature birth because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. The prognosis of preterm babies is a function of gestational age at birth because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. Preterm birth is the leading cause of infant mortality because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. 
the IOM report said that babies born before 32 weeks have the greatest risk for death and poor health outcomes. However, infants born between 32 and 36 weeks, which make up the greatest number of preterm births, are still at higher risk for health and developmental problems compared to those infants born full term. Because guess what? Accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. Gestational age at delivery is going to tell you whether your child has a good chance of living or whether they're going to be in a wheelchair because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. Even with planned deliveries, when non-medically in indicated or elective deliveries before 39 weeks happen, even in a perfectly normal pregnancy otherwise, they are associated with significant death, baby neonatal death. And this applies to both induction of labor and elective cesareans. If your baby is born before 39 weeks, you have increased your baby's risk of cerebral palsy or other neurological issues or death. Why? Because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the, third, the last trimester of pregnancy. Adverse neonatal outcomes. According to completed weeks of gestation at delivery, they're at absolute risk. Why? Because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. The risks that the babies who are born before 39 weeks have are increased NICU admissions, uh, feeding problems, ventilator support, you name it. Why? Because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. This slide shows the cerebral palsy rates among term and preterm births. Notice that uh, you have a 2.3 times higher at 37 weeks and a 1.5 times higher at 38 weeks than if you manage to get to 39 weeks. Why? Because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. And sudden unexpected infant death syndrome or SIDS? Well, the major risk factors are bed sharing, overheating, preterm birth, and low birth weight. Why? For the last two, because accretion of trace minerals takes place during the last trimester of pregnancy. Trace mineral accretion, trace mineral accretion. Dr. Hamami talked about it too. Of course, the populations without grocery stores were the worst hit for all of these problems. The people didn't have access to micronutrient-dense food. If you can't get fresh fruits and vegetables and are trying to grow a healthy baby while eating Cheetos and French fries, your kids are not gonna be healthy and they will have increased risk of health issues up to and including death. And in a completely obvious statement, Dr. Hamami pointed out that people with higher incomes had lower mortality rates with their children. Common sense bears them out. If you have a higher income, you can afford to buy the healthy food that your children need, and you're probably not living off of a 7-Eleven churro and a big gulp. Another important thing to note is that in the vet world, the group with the biggest problems has the least access to healthy micronutrient-dense foods which is what we're seeing in Detroit, Flint, and some of our other inner cities. Furthermore, we know from the vet literature that prenatal nutrition issues affect at minimum two generations down. In other words, if you don't have it in yourself, you can't pass that on to your offspring. By this time, I had become something of a self-taught expert on the nutritional needs of the, preterm, the premature infant. It's not like the information is hard to find, but maybe at some level, this seems just too easy saying nutrition matters. It's not just the vitamins or the numbers of calories. You need both macro and micronutrients. Remember, what does it take to grow a child? It takes 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and three essential fats. That's 91 things that it takes a human to thrive. Yet, despite the fact the medical literature talks about it, and the parents of premature babies know there's something wrong because preemie babies never get that healthy baby fat look that says, I have stores of energy to use for energy when I start walking. Despite the fact the US government posts about it on their website, despite the fact Disney, even Disney made a movie called Charlotte's Web about a runt pig named Wilbur who ate right and got big. Despite the fact you can't tell the difference between a normal child with cerebral palsy and a starving child in a famine-stricken area, the only people giving minerals to their micronutrient-deficient children are the ones lucky enough to talk to me. I'm sorry to say this, 
but I was ready to give up and just get on with my life. Or maybe make a documentary of somebody else's babies. I flip-flopped. And then it happened again. New neighbors moved in last year. In addition to a five-year-old boy, the household includes a beautiful nine-year-old girl diagnosed by T Detroit Children's Hospital with classic spastic cerebral palsy. She was a 26-week preemie, weighed one pound, 11 ounces at birth, and she couldn't stand up without help. Our project only dealt with babies, though, so I can't really explain why I did what I did next. Honestly, I was just being neighborly. I gave her parents a bottle of the micronutrients I've been telling you about. On June 8, 2012, I went over to her house to make arrangements for summer play dates and about fell over. She was standing up. In a little over a month, she had gained six pounds and was able to stand unassisted for the first time in her life. She has gained muscle weight and her hypertonic and hypotonic issues appear to be dramatically improving. <laughs> You'd think I'd have learned by now, but sometimes I'm a little slow. I went to my favorite social website to talk about what was happening, and I was lucky they didn't burn me at the stake. CP is not reversible for anyone. Saying so is appalling. You're selling snake oil, a horrific scam. Selfish, irresponsible, and possibly dangerous. An intentional effort to dupe and mislead. Children with CP don't have their spasticity just poof disappear because they took a friggin' vitamin. And my personal favorite, any cure is going to require something a lot more invasive, sophisticated, and technical than nutritional supplements. Fortunately, these people appear to be wrong.